Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tony P. This is Tony P. Oddcast, as it has been for, bro, I don't even count. I think it's, we might be over 200 episodes. If not, we're, we're coming up on it. Again, man, I don't keep up. I just do it. Uh, same thing with life in the days. I don't know what day it is. Sometimes I don't know how old I am. People, how old are you? I'm like, well, what year is it? I don't know what year it is. It just, what does it matter, man? You know, it's all just one long episode of odd, weird, and wacky news. They all didn't have that awesome theme song from Greg Klima. You can find him at Klima.com. That's true. I was doing uh, like YouTube videos and maybe maybe it was in podcast form of like this weird and wacky news um, and the theme song didn't come till later. I stopped doing it and I came back because I was like, man, I got my own theme song. Who can say that? I want to use it for everything. Like I want to keep keep a tape in my car. So when I'm getting out of my car, like, is that, is that, is that dude have his own theme music? Who has a tape deck? Like what is going on there? Uh, if you're watching the video, looking a little, looking a little fuzzy, I've been keeping the beard short, um, which means I was like, I'll keep it short. That's easier. It's hot. It's the summer. Apparently that means I have to like trim it up once a week. Like, oh my goodness, it's too much, too much when you work from home. So uh, normally I would take care of it before I'm camera, but not today. You guys are getting getting the realness. Speaking of the realness, you ready to get into the stories? We have uh, under what usually I, I put a note to give the little like preview and I forgot to do that, but we have an underwater excursion. We have a uh, more Florida man and, and a segment I'm calling, man, this is why we can't have anything. So let's, let's go ahead and get into it. This isn't even the Florida man story, but this is also in Florida, South Florida, uh, university of South Florida to be exact. Uh, I think it's in Tampa. We'll get to that. This professor, Joseph Deturi, embarked on a mission to stay 100 days underwater in isolation. He wants to find out what happens to the body when you're underwater for 100 days just by yourself. What is that? Three months? Told you I don't keep up with days. Three months and some change? It's easy. Uh, back in May, at 74 days, he broke the world record for the longest time staying underwater without being depressurized. Apparently, uh, people have, you know, what's the movie? Is it Abyss? Is that the one? Yeah, maybe. Where you got to get pressurized and they come up, and they get depressurized, you go back. I don't know, it's crazy. I think there was aliens in Abyss. I don't think there were aliens at University of South Florida. Apparently the aliens are in, where where did it land? There's one recent, I need to cover it next week, see what happens there. Um, but they're not, they're not here in Florida, not that alien. There's other aliens in Florida, y'all, I'm getting distracted. Uh, we broke the record, but I don't care, he told the f- local Florida news outlet. I'm down here for three specific reasons. And then he didn't list the reasons. I, I set these notes up, I set this article up and I looked at it and I was like, all right, three reasons. And then I was like, I don't, I don't see the three. So then I went back. I was like, did I copy it right? Is everything okay? So if you're waiting for his three specific reasons, you can just stop, just turn it off. Cause I I don't know. He now says he feels 10 years younger than when he started the experiment. Uh, After having spent three months, 30 feet underwater uh, off the coast of Key Largo. That sounds like a vacation. After returning to dry land, Joseph Deterry, who was 55, by the way, was evaluated by paramedics and they said everything's fine. Uh, it says they measured his vitality as well as his telomeres, the DNA sequence that connect to chromosomes. Apparently, I guess the telomeres got longer. I, I don't know if that's even appropriate. This is a family show. Um, and that's, that's healthier. That's a good thing. And they're going to use that research uh, to further further advance the technology between divers and also astronauts because it's kind of the same with the, the pressure and stuff. So good for him. I thought that was awesome. I thought it was a positive story for a change. They're hard to find. And uh, I was like, could I do, you know, three months underwater? Yeah, I do three months above water by myself without any interaction. Like, where was, the, was he door dashing? <laughs> Where the, 
How'd he get his food? Was he just ordering out for three months? Because that adds up. And I hope he was tipping them people. <laughs> this next story is the Florida man story. And y'all, let me tell you. I said, oh, this is a good story. Let me get this. So I will, before interjecting or making any jokes or anything, I will read the article in its entirety starting now. A man is accused of breaking into a Florida theme park, jumping into an alligator enclosure, and filming a video for social media. Period. Hard stop. <laughs> That's it. That is the entire article. And I was like, really, y'all? Don't you know I make a podcast? What do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with this? Half the show is just me reading stuff. Apparently, what was interesting was this article, sentence, was in the Sydney, Australia newspaper in the land down under where they have killer kangaroos and scorpions and crazy stuff. I think they said Australia is one of the like most dangerous places in the world because of the wildlife. That's that otherwise it'd be Detroit, but it's not Detroit. It's it's you know the wildlife, Australia. And yet even they are making fun of the Florida man. Now, I had to try to figure out what this article was or meant based on the, like, 12 words that they gave me. So the first place I started, well, what Florida theme park has alligators? That that narrowed down nothing. In fact, that added to it. I was like, I don't know, man. The theme park, like, a real theme park or, like, a Florida theme park? Because Florida does have all the Disney and the Universals and I'm pretty sure one of them has alligators, but, but then there's like alligator world, which I, I put like on the cusp. And then there's just like John's gator enclosure and they call it a theme park. Cause they sell churros. I don't know. So I don't know which theme park it was. Um, the guy jumped into an alligator enclosure of one of the many, many theme parks in Florida with gators. Right there, I'm out. I, I've I've mentioned this. I don't want anyone to get hurt. Uh, I don't talk about, you know, death or even bad injuries on this show. And this guy was okay. However, once you jump into the gator enclosure, I'm off, I'm off your team. I'm off your side at that point. I would have rather just not had the article for the show and him been eaten by the gator. Because you're in their space. What are you doing in the gator space? That just, that just seems like... Uh, I don't know, a level of privilege, man, that you think I'm just going to go into the jump, the gator space and be okay. Fortunately, unfortunately, he was okay. Last part, he filmed the video for social media. All right. So what? It's probably TikTok. Go do a search for TikTok on TikTok for gators. There's probably a billion of them. Nine hundred million, nine, 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 nine of them are probably in Florida. Lastly, from the file of, man, we can't have nothing nice. Uh, just recently, an artist in Hong Kong, uh, quote unquote, recreated or reinflated two super giant inflatable ducks. And, and he put them in the Victoria Harbor. He did this, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. I, I Someone correct me. Doesn't matter. He did it previously. Um, and did it again because he thought... Hey, ducks are fun. These ducks last time cheered people up. It's just fun to see two, you know, basically giant bath toys floating down the river. And I'm with them. I agree. In fact, I know a dude, actually a couple, uh, not a couple dudes. It is a couple, a, a married couple, uh, and they're not dudes. Yeah, I'm, I'm overcomplicating this. I'm making it weird. Anyway, they're a couple. And they like ducks. They like rubber ducks so much that they dress up and go to conventions like Dragon Con, which, by the way, is like 80 days away, and give out ducks. And I asked the guy one day, I said, hey, man, between me and you, respectfully, what's up with the ducks? And he said, you know what? People like them. It makes them smile. And ever since I gave one or two out, I noticed people like them. So we've just kind of made it a thing, and we keep giving them out. And I love it. I think that's awesome. So I thought of them, that's a duck man and duck fairy, by the way, thought of them when I saw the ducks in Hong Kong. I was like, yeah, that makes people happy. Well, 
one of the two giant inflatable ducks floating in Hong Kong's Victoria Harbor deflated just after a day they were unveiled. Crowds of residents and tourists flocked in the scorching heat to the promenade near the government headquarters to snap pictures of the ducks by Dutch artist Florengin Hoffman. But many who arrived in the afternoon only found one duck intact. The other one, a puddle of yellow plastic, like a big wet garbage bag. Can you imagine? Come like, hey man, you know, I'm gonna go see this duck. That's that's not that's not asking for too much, is it? Is it? I'm gonna take a picture of this duck. That's kind of funny. I might, you know, a little afternoon, a little road trip, maybe get some ice cream or something. Maybe grab some lunch, have a drink. You get one duck. At least they got the one. Organizers said their staff found one of the ducks was overstretched because of the hot water, and apparently it made it deflate. It was decided that the air needed to be immediately released uh, by loosening the seams to avoid any risk. Ah, so they got hot, they blew up too much, and instead of exploding, they had to they had to put it down. It's not a real duck, y'all. It's just just uh, you know, plastic. They said the duck would be transferred to the shipyard for repair. Uh, Hoffman said he hoped the return of his pop art icons would bring some joy to the city. Double duck, double luck. That might be a, I don't know, it's like an international say. I've never heard that in my life. A uh, Hong Kong office worker, Snow Wong, said it was even more interesting to see the ducks deflated. <laughs> this guy goes on to like really make something and take something out of this situation. It makes us wonder. Is double happiness even really possible in Hong Kong? If you look at the duck, you may find your answer, the 35-year-old said. Bro, why you got to... Damn, dude. Like, that kind of that kind of hit hard. Like, why'd you have to get so real? Nah, no double. You get one duck. You enjoy the one duck you have. It's not possible. All right, all right, man. Appreciate it. On that note, I'm going to let you all go. Good night. Like, good luck sleeping with that tonight, thinking about that. Is double happiness really possible? Think, oh, oh, that's the title of the show. Just got it. I didn't have it yet. That's what we're going with. Yeah, so think about that. Uh, so as I wrap up, uh, uh, man, stay out of the freaking gator pin. That, that, yeah, that's for starters. Just don't do not do that because I'm not rooting for you. I'll tell you that now. Uh, tip your DoorDash driver and think to yourself, is double happiness even possible? 